Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at an absolutely incredible update that we have just gotten to Yuzu Emulator, which has at least for me and many other users with powerful CPUs, basically made Super Mario Odyssey run at full speed 60 FPS in practically every situation. I'm also going to be providing you with and showing you how to install and use some brand new mods for this game that can dramatically boost your performance, especially so if you're using a computer that is a bit on the low end side of things. I'm also going to be providing you with some higher resolution mods. These mods are going to make your game look absolutely amazing and I'll explain exactly why we need them in a few moments. Okay, so this new update has introduced a brand new version of asynchronous GPU emulation and not to be dramatic, but this is pretty much the biggest update we've seen to async GPU since it was implemented in Yuzu the very first time. Why do I say this? I say this because this feature is now pretty much compatible with every single game on this emulator and also has now completely fixed any of the synchronization or frame rate speed up issues you may have previously seen in games that already did support it. To show you exactly how much faster this new async version is, I'm going to show you Cap Kingdom, an area you've seen before in a few moments, but before that, I want to show you the most demanding area in Super Mario Odyssey by far, Metro Kingdom. Before I show you the performance in the new update, let's take a quick look at how it was running in the old version. You can see we're running at anywhere between around 37 to 41 frames per second, which to be honest is a fairly decent and playable performance level. However, check this out. Using this new asynchronous GPU emulation update, it's pretty damn clear to see that we have seen an absolutely enormous boost in performance, now making the previously worst performing kingdom now give you the same or better frame rates than the previously best performing kingdoms. Also introduced in this asynchronous GPU emulation update is the fact that Super Mario Odyssey now properly uses a dynamic resolution, which means that if your game is not running at very good performance levels, it's going to lower the resolution of the actual game in order to try and maintain a higher frame rate. Now, it's not the actual lowering of resolution that has delivered this performance update, and you may have noticed in the gameplay so far that a lot of my gameplay footage of Mario Odyssey is very, very pixelated. As I said at the beginning of this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can completely fix this resolution issue while also maintaining these absolutely amazing levels of performance. As I also said, it's not just Super Mario Odyssey that is affected by these changes. You can see here, I'm running a Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu at a perfectly locked and stable 30 frames per second. If I unlock my frame rate, you can see instead of getting the 45 frames per second I was previously getting, it's jumped up to about 60 or 65. In these sub areas or caves, I'm getting 50 to 60 frames per second also. And in any of these capture or battle screens, I'm also getting well over 100 frames per second almost four times the frame rate of the actual original game. You're also going to see that when running at a locked 30 frames per second, you are no longer going to experience any speed, sound or gameplay desynchronization. So literally all you have to do is turn the setting on, reap the massive performance benefits you gain from it and simply just play your game. One of the worst titles that was affected by the desynchronization by the older version of asynchronous GPU emulation was Super Mario Maker 2 and as you'll see it's having no desync issues and when I unlock my frame rate my performance levels absolutely skyrocket meaning that for anybody who's trying to run this game on a much lower end system than the one I am using you are going to have a much much easier time maintaining full speed emulation at all times. This upgrade is literally a game changer making many Many games not just usable but basically fully playable at full speed at all times. In Cap Kingdom it actually runs so fast that the level begins to flicker so if you're running at frame rates over 60 I would highly advise just locking your frame rate. I'm simply unlocking mine to show you just how much the performance has improved in this area. Now as I said Super Mario Odyssey has its dynamic resolution implemented and you can see in Cap Kingdom right here even running in its docked config I am getting amazing performance but the resolution is pretty terrible. I'm going to show you how to 100% fix this right now and also how you can boost performance if your computer is on the low end side of things. 
So down in the description of this video, you will find these two zip files, one for Mario Odyssey resolution mods and one for no anti-aliasing. All you need to do is download these and unzip them to your desktop just like I've done. Once you've done this, you simply need to reopen Yuzu and navigate back to wherever Super Mario Odyssey is in your games list. Once you've found it, you want to select it, right click it and open Mod Data Location. Then once you've done this, you want to make sure to dump this no AA file in here. Then you want to open the Super Mario Odyssey Resolution Mods. You want to highlight all of these like so, right click, select, copy, and then paste these also into this exact same mod directory. So you can see we have 2x docked resolution, 2x lower docked, 4x docked resolution, and 4 times lower docked, as well as our no anti-aliasing mod. Once you have those added to that directory, come back to your game again, right click, select properties, and you should see all of these mods are now appearing in properties to be either activated or deactivated. So first of all, I'm going to show you how you can fix the resolution issues that are caused by the new async version. To do this, I'm going to be turning on 4x docked resolution and also the no anti-aliasing graphics pack, which can make your game look a hell of a lot better and also boost your performance by 2 to 4 frames per second. Jumping back into gameplay with this 4x resolution mod active, you can see just how much better it has made the game look, it's no longer horribly pixelated, and my performance levels are the exact same as they were were before, maintaining well over 60 frames per second, even jumping up to 90 and above at times. Now if your performance does drop when using the X4 resolution multiplier, you should turn on the X2 multiplier, the game will look very similar but it will be a slightly lower resolution. The main thing we want to maintain is very good performance levels, making sure that you are achieving the maximum frame rate possible. Okay, so as I also said, I'm now going to be showing you how you can significantly boost your performance if you are a low end user. Unlike before, we're not going to be using 4x docked resolution, we're going to be using either 2 times lower or if you need to use it, 4 times lower docked resolution. Now that we have this activated, we can close our properties window and get booted back into game. Once we are back in Cap Kingdom, you can see that our resolution is indeed significantly lower and because I'm using a very powerful GPU in the form of my 1080 Ti, my performance hasn't really changed at all unless I'm looking at a very non-demanding area. Now, obviously, it's not the most beautiful loving game, but if you're using an iGPU or a very, very low-end AMD or NVIDIA GPU, you should see a much, much larger performance differential than anything I'm seeing on my 1080 Ti. For example, Zekin, the creator of these mods, gets 15 to 17 frames per second higher when using a 2x lower in comparison to just the regular resolution that Super Mario Odyssey runs at, a very nice performance boost on an iGPU. Taking a quick look at these different resolution formats, first of all we're going to take a look at 2x, and while my performance is very much so outstanding, staying well above 70 frames per second, it does visually look pretty bad. Next up, we're going to swap across to the resolution lowered mode that happens when you use asynchronous GPU emulation. You can see that my maximum frame rate is between 2 and 3 frames per second lower than when using the lowered resolution, but obviously 2 frames per second isn't going to matter to many people, especially when the difference in visuals is so drastic. Next up, we'll transition over to the 4x resolution mod which I have displayed running on my own system, and again, you can see the game once again looks much much better, smoother and less pixelated, and we're also maintaining our absolutely outstanding performance levels. These visuals and frame rates remain consistent across all kingdoms I have tested, and when we compare the performance in this brand new version of Yuzu to the older version, we can see that the graphics are absolutely identical in resolution and visuals, except in our new upgraded version we're getting between 20 to 35 frames per second higher. Considering the fact that so many people in the past have said that Yuzu Emulator will never run this game at full speed until multi-core is implemented, these kind of changes massively disprove those people and if the developers of Yuzu are to believed, they can optimize it even further in future without having to implement multi-core. Now as always, if there was anything in this video that confused you or you're not sure about, please just ask down below in the comment section of this video, over on my Discord server, or if you wish to do so. So please join Yuzu's official Discord server, that server has tons of helpful moderators, users and support members, myself included, so if you're having any issues at all with getting anything I've shown in this video set up, or obviously anything in relation to getting this emulator
computer is set up on your computer, we can answer any of your questions over there. As with any of the mod files I've demonstrated in this video, you'll find links to those respective discords down in the description. Before I go, I want to give another massive thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon.com. You guys are absolutely amazing. As you all know, you help me to pay for things like electricity bills, water bills, internet bills, and every single game I need for testing in videos just like this one. So I want to give you guys a massive, massive shout out and thank you. If anybody out there in the community would like to help with the day-to-day -day running of BSOD Gaming, please consider heading to the Patreon link in the description and pledging or donating to support. As I always say, these pledges are not a requirement at all to get help from me here on YouTube or over on my Discord server. They are, however, massively appreciated, so a big thank you to all of my past, present, and indeed potential future supporters. Once again guys, thank you very much for checking out this video. Have a great day and I will see you all in the next one.